Hello and welcome to another episode. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down 10 things I wish I knew before I came to the Maldives on a surf trip. Number one is that prices are reasonable. The Maldives has a reputation in surfing and I guess in general for being one of the most expensive and like luxurious surf trips you can do. While it's definitely not one of the world's cheapest surf destinations, it can be affordable. I found meals for between five and ten dollars you know getting from the airport to one of the islands costs around twenty five dollars on the ferry for example this nice little room that i'm staying in now is twenty five dollars per night so yeah they're just some of the prices that you can experience in the maldives obviously you can spend a lot more than this you know if you stay at one of the private resorts you're going to be spending hundreds of dollars per night Number two is that it's not great for beginners. Although it's absolute paradise here, you know, you've got beautiful beaches, some of the clearest water you'll ever see in your life. Found the Maldives not that suitable for beginners because most of the waves are all reef breaks. It's live coral, it's very, very sharp. So if you fall off, the consequences are pretty high. That said, there are some sections of reef like on the inside of the main waves that you can surf. But generally speaking, just because of the reef breaks and obviously the crowds, it's not the best place in the world for beginners. So my third point is that the reef is fucking sharp. So while the waves in the Maldives definitely aren't as powerful as say the Mentawise or Fiji, they are perfect, but they just seem to kind of lack the power of those other like top surf destinations. I don't know why, I guess it's the shape of the reef and how that tapers off into the ocean. And as well, swells have to come from so far away that by the time it reaches the Maldives, it's often not as powerful. But that said, underneath the water, the reefs are still really sharp. I've been surfing cokes every day, and when you're finishing waves on the inside, it does get really shallow. Thanks to safety surfing, I've been pretty lucky with not getting scrapes on my, on my body. The only trouble I've had is when I've been paddling out from the beach. Now, you can also get the boat, but when I've been paddling out, I've like scraped my hands a few times. You know, you jump in and the water drains away and then all of a sudden you're like paddling like this to get out. So yeah, I've got just very minor scrape, but yeah, a few little scrapes on my hands just, just from that. My fourth point is that it's freaking crowded here. As you'd expect for such like a world renowned and famous surf destination, you know, everyone wants a slice of paradise. So, and who can blame them? You know, it's such a beautiful place. The waves are pretty easy and kind of perfect. So. Yeah, everyone wants to come here. And what makes it tricky in the Maldives, especially at Cokes where I am now, is that you've got people staying on the land at either like the camps or, or rooms like I am. So like independent surfers or if they're traveling in groups, they're heading out into the lineup. You've got people on the boat taking the boat out and then you've got charter boats as well rocking up to some of the spots. So you've got all these different crews of people all descending on, on one lineup and if the waves are good or if it's a little bit slow, it just makes for a really frustrating experience. I mean, I can't speak for all the different spots. There's definitely some like lesser known spots that you could escape the crowds, but don't expect to come here and surf without the crowds. That said, if you're staying at Pasta Point or Lohi's in one of the exclusive resorts, you're paying a much higher price, but you get that exclusivity. You know, you get to surf those waves with only the other people staying at the camp. So that leads me on to my fifth point, which is that you can surf most of the waves. You know, it's one of the first things you think of when, when you think of a Maldivian surf trip is that where can I actually surf? It's only Pasta Point, Lohis and Nyama that are privatized. So those three spots are kind of off limits unless you stay at those exclusive resorts right on the waves. They somehow own the rights to those reefs, so no one else is allowed to surf. However, Cokes, Chickens, Honkies, Sultans, all these other like really famous Maldivian waves you can surf. You know, some of them you've got to get a boat out to. So number six is that you will need a boat to get to a lot of the breaks. Now I'm staying here on Tulusudu Island, which I've, been, I've just been paddling out to Cokes, which is directly in front of the island. You can get a short boat ride across the channel to Chickens as well. So those waves are very, very close. However, if you really want to maximize your time in the Maldives and get the best waves on the best days, you know, and surf them in the right conditions, you've got to splash out on the boats. I mean, the boat to Chickens only costs around $10, but the further and further you go, the more expensive it gets. So that's something to bear in mind and definitely factor into your budget. Now, number seven is the food. In my experience, the food has been pretty average here in the Maldives. Now, I don't want to disrespect anybody that's from here because they do have really nice local food and a lot of the local food is kind of like rice and fish and curry sort of style food. 
and it just always seems to come with spice. And then like the Western food, like like burgers, pizzas, I've just found it to be really like average, to be honest. It's like just pretty badly done. So just highly recommend sticking to the local food because it is so much better. It's, it's not only cheaper, but it's just better. Just watch out for the spice because it is freaking spicy. My next point is that you will have to respect the local religion and culture. Now, the Maldives is a Sunni Muslim country, which means religion is a huge part of life here. The main thing you'll notice is the morning prayer call, which happens around 4.30, 5am. Um, this happens every single day. It'll probably wake you up, but you know, that's what they do. So in addition to that, there's no alcohol in the Maldives. At some of the more luxurious resorts, I'm sure you'll be able to find it, but many of these local islands don't actually serve alcohol. I don't drink, so it's not really a problem for me, but if you like to have a cold beer after your surf, that's definitely something to bear in mind. So if you're traveling as a female, this something that's really important is that in the Maldives, they have designated bikini beaches. At a lot of the local beaches, you'll have to cover up, so you have to wear modest clothing, which I think means like covering your shoulders and wearing like long sleeves and, uh, and long dress. And you'll see the signs everywhere saying no bikinis allowed, and they actually have like designated bikini beaches where you can kind of just wear what you want, but that's definitely something to bear in mind. And it also applies for when you're walking around as well, like it's kind of like frowned upon to be walking around in a bikini. Number nine is that it's fucking hot. You don't need me to tell you that it's really hot here. That's obvious, but I've just found the heat to be especially intense, you know. I live in Bali at the moment, so it's a lot hotter than it is in Bali even. So anytime past 9, 10 a.m. is incredibly hot and going surfing, you're gonna have to wear full face of zinc, hat, long sleeves, you know, go have the full sun protection get up. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really intense and it's, it's really hard to like be productive. I mean, you're not necessarily coming here to work. You, you come here to surf and relax, right? But if you are trying to live that sort of like digital nomad lifestyle, it, it's a really hard place to do it. By the afternoon, you're just exhausted from doing anything. And my 10th and final point is that lineup hierarchy doesn't really exist in the Maldives. <laughs> because there's so many traveling surfers from all over the world, it's so popular. There's a lot of like, paddling around, a lot of snaking, a lot of dropping in, a lot of people rocking up on boats, jumping straight off and getting straight into the next set wave. Yeah, I've just found it more than anywhere else I've ever been in the world, that to be like the most unethical <laughs> lineup ever. I don't know if people just don't know or just get too excited or what, but yeah, it just seems to be happening a hell of a lot here. So sometimes the surfs can be really frustrating. Obviously you've got locals that when they're in the lineup, they get the best waves and, and that's fair enough. That's exactly how it should be. But then I, I see a lot of like really obvious snaking and you know, catching a lot of set waves. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. And because the Maldives draws like, I guess a more like upper end intermediate crowd rather than like pros and like really advanced surfers. It's just like a recipe for disaster basically. So just a couple of bonus points that I should mention just to summarize this video. So when boats come past, it messes up so many waves. I mean, I've seen this in a few different spots around the world, most notably in Chicama in Peru, that the boats dropping the surfers out into the lineup come so close to the wave that if that happens at the same time as a the set, there's just boat wake running through the whole lineup and it just completely ruins the set. They only need to park like a little bit further out and that won't happen. I guess they're trying to, you know, deliver the best service for the, the customers, you know, who are paying them 10, 20 bucks to drop them at the waves. But yeah, it just sucks, you know, there's that there's not really any need for that. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed these tips for surfing in the Maldives. And I know this video is probably a little bit negative. It focuses on a lot of the things that are quite negative about the Maldives, but the waves are, are really fun. It's really, really warm. It's an amazing place to visit. Like it's so pristine, the water's so clear, it's so hot. But yeah, I hope this video has given you a few insights into what it's really like, you know, in reality. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. Any questions, please comment down below. But for now, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next video.